Hello, everyone, and welcome to It's Your Voice. I am your host, Anita DeFrancesco, and this program is a compilation of subjects under the headings of mindfulness, sexuality, and relationships. It was born out of the DonnaGentileStory.com, a true crime book, a woman who was silenced, and I'm keeping her voice alive. It's This program is dedicated to all the voiceless women of the world. May your voice be heard. And... Um, to, this is episode 16, and our topic today is rumination, psychological rumination. What is rumination? R-U-M-I-N-A-T-I-O-N. It's a topic that you don't hear much about, uh, or maybe it's talked about in other ways, but the term for um, overthinking and, and how to stop overthinking and having these chattering thoughts in the brain is called rumination. It's when your thoughts dance around your head and you repetitively, repetitively go through negative thinking, pattern thinking, painful thinking, and it's a constant circle that you're dancing around. And, uh, but we're going to talk about how we can change that and how we can repeat positive thoughts to, <clears throat> to ourselves, so, so that we can restructure our cognition and help ourselves to get away from the pain the things that are stopping us from facing the present moment, from being in the present moment, from being aware and staying connected to awareness and presence. And I mean, we're all tired, or some of you may be tired of overthinking the same repetitive ruminating thoughts. But that's because we think and we stay or are conditioned to be on the negative side of life. And no one really teaches you how to be on the positive side, how to think positive, because we're, we're governed by what we see <clears throat> every day, what we hear, by what are the influence of our friends, and so on and so forth. But you can let go of all of this. And of course, mindfulness, meditation, all of these things now that are in our great world we live in, that uh, relaxation, escapism, traveling, everything. We have so much available to us. We just have to seek out and, and reach for what you think will help you shape your psychological being, your psychological self. Rumination is one of, what is it? It's obsessive thinking. It's between anxiety and depression. So what is anxiety? Anxiety stems from fear, danger. Now, just because you have anxiety, it doesn't mean you ruminate if you get out of a relationship or someone dies or you leave a job or someone said something wrong to you or things that happen to you in your daily life every day. Some people ruminate on those thoughts. They, they, they can't let go of them. But that doesn't mean because you have anxiety that you are a ruminator. <laughs> but anxiety stems from fear, danger, panic. And what anxiety is, is in the body is when people breathe <clears throat> rapidly. They're afraid. Their heart starts racing because they're nervous and restless. And it's sometimes combined with uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, but not necessarily. Uh, it's basically trauma stressors that <clears throat> come from our experiences and what we're living with in the dormant body and the pain body. Sometimes worry does it, environment and comorbidities. If you have a lot of different diseases that are stressful or, or uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, diseases that are, can be close to uh, death, say for like people that have kidney failure or diabetes, you know, those kind of diseases, you're basically holding on, you're surviving. <clears throat> so anyway, repeating the thought, or the problem without completion. Oh, it's terrible. I've been there. I know what it is. You get out of a relationship. Let's talk about that. And you repeatedly go through these thoughts and patterns, what he or she did. But there's no completion to it. It's just a circle of a dance, a chatter. One, when one is depressed, um, the themes of rumination are, are about being worthless. So, so if you have some depression or light depression or clinical depression... You can, it can work on your, your self-esteem and, 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 and your worthiness. So these are things that we need to work on about ourselves, our self-esteem, our worthiness, so that we don't, we're not faced with this type of um, character, this type of problem that could surface when we get out of a relationship, say, or we have a, uh, an experience that leaves us, you know, neglected or abandoned. You lose a job, you get fired from a job, whatever the situation. 
the repetition of feelings of inadequacy, they can raise the anxiety and anxiety interferes with solving the problem. So just in life in general, having anxiety is, is, um, is something that can block your clarity, block your presence. So the first thing to address is anxiety and we can start with breathing. So that's gonna be number one. You're gonna take up some breathing this week. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Rumination involves the passive repetitive focus on the nature of one's own distress and it causes potential consequences. It's self-referential, meaning it's focused on one's own thoughts and feelings rather than goal-oriented. It may be triggered by realizing the discrepancy between current status and desired status. Again, it's pain and it's sadness and it's fear and it's something that we really don't want to face the present moment about. So it's a, it's a way of hiding. And, and um, the focus is problem pondering rather than problem solving. You rather ponder on it and stay connected to it. It's an addiction. Sorry, folks, it's an addiction. And addictions come in all kinds of things, not only you know narcotics or alcohol. Depression, when that sets in, I want to get into this, what we call this body memory, a body sensory memory. Your body remembers everything. For example, you're a child, you fall down, you hurt your knee. When you grow up, you go skiing and you fall again. And all of a sudden, that body memory of the knee surfaces, resurfaces from when you were a child, when you hurt that knee. So these, the, 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 the um, trauma in the body, whether it's emotional or physical, is, is a sensory and it's, it's, a, it's a memory in the body. So it's the sensory perception that we'd want to work, start working with, learning how to connect to the sensory perception. So ruminating is worsened by another difficulty of the depressed and anxious brain, an inability to help the self find the solution. Same thing I just said there. Sometimes the brain chemistry is so far gone or changed that it makes it hard to switch to another perspective to find a way out. So it's according to what, what kind of changes are going on in the brain chemistry. Um, restructuring the cognition is where we want to go because that's the only way that you're going to change. But this takes a lot of working with the body sense memory, somatic therapies. <clears throat> you're listening to It's Your Voice. I'm your host, Anita DeFrancesco. And uh, we're talking about rumination, episode 16. Rumination switches on and off, goes out of the negative neural networks, tackling one problem at a time. So how can you end the rumination? We have to get rid of what we call that negative memory network and start to think positive. So I, I advise people to repeat positive thoughts to themselves. I am better than so-and-so. I mean, you're not, you're just saying this so that you can upgrade your your cognition in, and your self-esteem. Like, I can do this rather than I can't. I am successful. I am going to be someone, or I am someone, rather say, than saying going to be successful, I am successful. So if you start to repeat these sentences that are positive in the present moment, this is one way to, to um, start to change the negative thoughts that and the chatter, the head chatter living that's governing you all, all day long and, and uh, taking the place and taking you away from who you are. You want to take those negative thoughts and throw them, throw them aside. So uh, the neural networks is triggered by the mood, the mood you're connected to, other moods that you interact with when you're afraid of the uh, bad outcomes. So a lot of time we're afraid of what changes about or, or, or if, there, if there would be negativity or rejection or, or um, target, tar if we're targeted about something. And uh, so, so the, uh, we're triggered by this and it all has to do with the emotional mood that you're living at that moment. Um, so what I suggest is to think about the happy times. You know, pull out those photos from say childhood or when you were out on group trips you know, I always pull out my, um, I went on cruises, a lot of cruises when I was in my 20s, and I'm in my 30s now, but when I was in my 20s, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, anyhow, um, I would pull out these photos, I would go on these cruises, and I had some good and bad times with, of course, you know, the, the dates that I 
was uh, experiencing at the time. And I'll tell you, I always look at them and I look at it and say, what did my body feel like at that time? So I want to get into teaching you how to scan your body to know what kind of feelings are in there. Because this is where your feeling is living. Your feeling is not living in the head. We become armored in the brain with our thinking. We become armored in, in the ego. So the goal is to get into the somatic body. So I look at the photos and I look for the joy and happiness because they have physical sensations, just like fear has physical sensations. But we don't consider fear to be a physical sensation now, do we? But when you feel that joy and happiness, your body feels elated, expanded, alive. And that's the joy and happiness. And so what I'm going to have you do for a moment is we're going to, I'll teach you a scanning exercise that I, I teach and instruct people on the Dr. Wilhelm Reich's work, organ, organ therapy, organomy, where we uh, do some breathing to charge the body up so that we reduce uh, armor, emotional armor, sexual armor, armor in general that blocks the feeling and the sensation. So, for example, what you would do, and you can inbox me and I can go over all of this with you. What I'm noticing, I sit down in a chair, barefoot, have my feet flat on the floor, and what I'm noticing from my feet to my knees. So, for example, what I'm noticing from my feet to my knees, I feel a heaviness. I feel a sadness. I feel a left out. A neglectedness. So you can feel anything and you can hear. What do you hear? What kind of vibrations are you hear, hearing? From my feet to my knees, I, I feel, I hear a vibration of a penetration of some sort or a vibration of loudness. So these are the things we want to key into because we're, again, we're working with the senses and that will be one exercise and you go through the whole body, but we can go over that. You'll have to contact me and I can give you more information. Um, ruminating is a clear link between rum an increased likelihood of de So for people that have rumination, they can likely get into clinical depression if, if the rumination doesn't lift. So you clearly need some help because it can be linked to PTSD or eating disorders, alcohol abuse, uh, and, and drug uh, addictions, anything that would have been self-harmful to you in your past. If you get into a situation where you find yourself uh, obsessing and overthinking and get, you know, these ruminating negative the thoughts that, that are ruminating throughout your head and your body, you need to address that and you need to do it through the body and the mind, but the body. Yoga is one way. Now, <clears throat> let's see, if you have a history of trauma, <clears throat> for example, perfectionist type people or neurotic type people or people that lack confidence. Um, it, the, these, these kinds of things can also contribute to rumination. They, 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 they say that women ruminate and are triggered by sadness and men are ruminate and are triggered by anger. And this is true because men don't, don't stay close to their feeling as a woman does. A man doesn't stay close to his heart. He more or less armors the heart. So his ruminating would come from an anger way, where a woman's rumination is triggered by sadness. I don't know which one I'd want, but I've had both, you know, and um, I got to say it, the feeling is much more easy to dissolve once you get in touch with the feeling. The anger will stay connected to you, and it's not productive in the end. Strategies that would help you... Um, uh, rumination include distraction, meditation, realistic goal setting. And one thing we really want to work on is building that self-esteem, you know, working on building the self-esteem because the self-esteem is key. People that, just for example, you get out of a relationship and then you're obsessing and thinking all of these thoughts about the person who hurt you or you hurt or, and it goes on and on and on until the pain goes away, until you face the pain in the body. It's not the mind, it's the body, because the brain is in your body. And once you start to face that pain, then life becomes clear. You start to get in touch with the pleasure. And the sensation is the pleasure, the pleasure of happiness, that emotion. So this perfectionist and neurotic, these are 
rigidity, forms of character that take away from your feeling. They, they not only do they take away from the feeling, but they, they um, bridge, you know, the feeling, they bridge the, um, the armor to the, um, the shame. So we want to break that bridge. Uh, let's see what else we have for you. One of the things I would really like to address with this is, is one of the things is about letting go. I know letting go, letting go of grudges, surrendering. How long do you hold on to the visceral feel, feelings of anger? You know, you had an argument with someone, it was nothing, big deal, but you hold on to those visceral feelings for like three days or you're stuck in traffic and, and that you were so angered by the traffic and, 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 and the and the, and the bad weather or whatever it was. And then all of a sudden, these visceral feelings are living with you for three and four days and you go on and on about it. You need to just let it go. Get a pillow and hit a pillow. Scream it out because these things are taking away from your power. Not only your power, but your creativeness, your success, your presence, and, and, and away from your sexual life, your sexual being. So visceral feelings are... Are part of ruminating they linger but if you continually hold on to each and every experience that makes you angry uh what's going to happen it builds up and then a volcano happens one day so you want to deal with them you know one by one i would say write down everything that makes you angry from your childhood the, the anger you think you're holding on to and then just the everyday trivial things just kind of let them go you know blow them off um don't hang on to the, the little conflict you had with someone at work that could go on in your head and ruminate for three days, which I've been there. I know what it's like, but just now letting go or even being jealous of, some, of people, like someone's more successful than you. How long do you hold on to that jealousy, those visceral feelings of, ah, oh, why are they better and I'm not, you know, or whatever. So the thing is, we're going to let go of this. That's going to be our goal this week. We're going to let go of the grudges and we're going to surrender to the feeling, to having the relationship with your own feelings, surrendering to your heart, and learning how to repeat positive things. You see, learning how to re repeat positive things in your mind over and over again. I am great. Today is a great day. I'm going to do great. People love me. If you're the kind that says nobody likes me, people hate me, well, start to say everyone loves me. And, you know, before I walk in a room, I always say that everyone is going to love me when I walk in this room. They all love me. So I don't feel that, you know, that judgment coming from people when they start to look at you and maybe the way you're dressed or whom you're with and all of those little things that kind of make you feel insecure. But really it's them stealing your power because, because they have issues, because they're projecting thoughts. So you want to walk in with this open heart and repeatedly saying, everyone loves me, I love myself. The goal is, is not to avoid the automated, is to not to avoid the automated negative thoughts, but to change or redirect them. And that's what I'm saying here. Changing or redirecting them with different words, more positive words. Everyone likes me. I am great. I am the best at what I can do. So just make a list, okay? If you need some help with that, you can reach out to me. And I want to thank you all. Remember, we're changing the thoughts in the head. Okay, that's what we're doing. We're going to dance around positivity. Thank you for tuning in to It's Your Voice. I have been your host, Anita DeFrancesco, episode 16, and the topic is rumination. The Donna Gentile Story.com and Anita DeFrancesco.com. I have books on Amazon, a true crime book, and a spiritual book about my life and how I had a journey and transformation and how I succeeded in becoming uh, healed and transformed. You can find me at those places, and thank you very much. Enjoy this podcast.